Hi, welcome to the Autism Family Channel. I'm Brittany and today we're gonna to talk about what causes autism and why it matters and also why it doesn't matter. So I thought we'd start by just a little disclaimer. I might be looking down at my phone just to make sure I've got the right uh, source materials and everything. And I'm also going to start up front by saying I'm probably not gonna take a hard line on any of this. We still know so little about what causes autism, what the risk factors are. There are some things that science is looking into that I think is fascinating. And um, that's why we're going to have this discussion. But in the end, I hope that you provide your comments below on this video on what you think might be contributing factors and also what your thoughts are. So yeah, with that in mind, let's get started. So for the most part, we believe, scientists believe that autism is an inherited disorder. They think roughly 60 to 80% of, you know, it is determined by a DNA with other risk factors. And gosh, if I had a dollar for every time I heard some idea or someone, you know, theorizing what causes autism, I would be super rich, right? Like I've heard everything from vaccines to fevers to, um, there used to be the fridge theory, right? Where they thought uh, autism was caused by unloving parents, specifically mothers, which has been heavily debunked. And so I'm just gonna talk purely about what has been studied and come out in scientific journals by scientists. But yes, mostly scientists believe it's genetic, right? But there have been a couple of new news articles that I wanted to talk about. This is from the Consortium of Children's Environmental Health, which I believe is in Great Britain. And it talks about um, the relation between autism and toxic microplastics and chemicals found in household goods, cosmetics, food packaging, that is causing a spike of autism diagnoses worldwide. And I think this is fascinating because, you know, there's always something that you wonder about, right? Like you're wondering, what am I doing wrong? Is there something I could be doing better as far as being a mom to be a better parent? Specifically in this case, you know, did I cause my child's autism? Did I drink a Diet Coke or something? And anyways, moms, we think about these things, right? Well, here is an actual study that talks about specifically BPA and PFAs. These are these chemicals that are found in nonstick cookware, um, plastic packaging. They're related to fertility issues, estrogen and testosterone loss. Um, they affect neurodevelopment and all kinds of things, including causing what we think might trigger autism in some babies and people. And it's just very interesting that only now are we coming to realize the significance of being exposed to these chemicals early on in the womb and later in life. I'm also going to share some information from this interview with an epidemiologist who also has a child with autism that I think is fascinating. And they talk about parental age being a factor. Um, older parents, both male and female, the older you are, the more likely you are to have a child on the spectrum. Also, there's uh, interesting research that shows that if you had a fever during your first or second trimester, that also ups the risk for some reason. And a lot of this, they're still trying to discover the whys and hows it works. Like I would say that we still don't really know what causes autism and that's okay. Now I'm gonna get into why it matters. I think that we keep researching what causes autism and and I'm gonna finish by why it doesn't matter. I think it's important to know why, partially because there's so many guesses as to what causes it and what people can do differently. I have heard everything from diet to uh, disciplinary practices in you know, giving your child autism or not giving them autism. I'm pretty sure you didn't give your kid autism by feeding them like French fries accidentally one time, right? But they also talk about heavy metal being possibly influential in autistic development. I don't know, as far as I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but you're born with it or you're not born with it, right? Autism is something that you are born with as a neurological developmental disorder. And it's not something that's cured by medication. It's eased with therapy and you should get your child into therapy as soon as possible in their early stages so that they can have a way better outcome, better ability to communicate and have a you know better life overall. And another point I wanted to touch on is the real, one of the really important reasons I think we should continue to investigate what causes autism is because of the enormous impact it has on the quality of life of people who are autistic, 
and those who care for them. I would say, especially with people whose lives have been affected severely by it, who have difficulty making relationships or speaking or, or doing basic activities of life can say that, that their lives have been profoundly affected by autism and, and we should do all that we can to investigate the whys and help people have a healthier life in the future. And I don't want to say that we shouldn't, you know, have people with autism. I think there will always be people on the spectrum. There always have been people on the spectrum. And people who are neurodivergent have immense capabilities and, and much to offer the world. I mean, our own boys are amazing and incredible. But sometimes I wonder if, if there was like a magic button and I could push it and it would take away the struggles that they have that are related to autism. As a mom, I'd do it for sure. I don't know though if that would take away something special and intrinsic that is part of them because they have autism. And that's a really interesting question and discussion I'm definitely willing to go into. Now I'm gonna talk about why it doesn't matter. And this thought process for me always comes up whenever I see these new articles, these clickbaity titles like new cure or new discovery, what causes autism, the, the truth is here. And, and it always makes me laugh a little bit. I'm like, well, that's great, you know, that, that's wonderful that they found more risk factors or more things that they can do, like not heating up plastic in the microwave or, you know, avoiding environmental pollutants that might, you know, mutate genetics in the womb or something. I think, oh, great for them, good. How does that help me today? It doesn't. It honestly, sometimes it adds to my anxiety. It makes me think back on what I could have done differently that I had no idea, you know, as a pregnant mom. Like, we lived in North Salt Lake, I think, at one point. When I was pregnant with our children and that was just full of environmental pollutants and sometimes I think if my kids lived in like I don't know like Coeur d'Alene Idaho somewhere beautiful and pristine would they still have had autism it's a great question and I don't know the answer to that but the point is why am I beating myself up about it it doesn't matter all of these um, research articles are great and fascinating for all the other reasons I mentioned but it doesn't really help me or my kids now other than possibly making us all feel like garbage about the way we raised them before or what we did before, right? And so it doesn't matter what causes autism for the people living and existing today. What matters also is, is how we go forward and how we take care of the people in the best way we know how now. So anyway, I'd love to hear what you think about this issue. Do you think researching autism makes a difference or is it kind of moot at this point? And so yeah, let's move forward to the future with optimism. Let's worry more about the people in our lives now and how we can help them better in the present, but also have that space in our brains thinking, how can we do better in the future? And I think that's how I'm gonna handle it. I'm gonna release that stress that I have about the past, about being a um, not good enough mom, and I'm gonna focus on being the best mom I can be now. Anyway, that's my thought. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments and hope you have a great day.